Welcome back to 100 Days of Logic with Carnadius.org. Today we're going to be continuing with categorical logic and categorical syllogisms, looking at the answers to our Venn diagram problems that we offered in the last video. As with all of our answer videos, this is going to be a little bit longer, so we can really flesh out why these are the correct answers to the problems. If you haven't checked out the problems, here they are. Your job is to make Venn diagrams for all of these problems to tell if they are Boolean valid and to tell if they are Aristotelian valid. Yes, it is cheating to just look at a chart that says whether or not these are valid. So, the first one is figure 1, A, A, A. All M are P, all S are M, therefore all S are P. We will fill it in, and we will see we don't even need to take the next step for Aristotle because this is going to be Boolean valid, and anything that's valid for Boole will be valid for Aristotle. The only place anything for S can go is in that center spot where it is going to be also a P and an M, so all S are P. It doesn't matter that S exists, this will be Boole valid and Aristotle valid. Next up, figure 1, A, A, I. All M are P, all S are M, the getting looks the same, therefore some S are P. Note, this is a particular conclusion from universal premises, it's going to be Boole invalid, but... Let's see if it's going to be Aristotelian valid. There is one spot, one term that has only one spot open. That's going to be our S term. So we'll put an X with a circle around it in that center spot. We'll find out that M exists, not S. So this is in fact going to be invalid for both Boole and Aristotle, because S doesn't exist. And because it was not M that had the only empty spot. It was S that had the only empty spot. Figure 3, E, A, O. No M are P, all M are S, therefore some S are not P. Once again, this is a particular conclusion from general premises, so it's going to be Boole invalid. We notice that there is one area of our M term that is open, so we'll put an X with a circle around it in that area, and we'll see. M does exist, so that X with a circle around it gets to stay there. However, it's going to be Boole invalid, yet Aristotle valid, because that X with a circle around it is the conclusion we were looking for, that O conclusion. Boole invalid, Aristotle valid. Figure 2, E, A, E, no P, R, M, all S, R, M, therefore no S, R, P. Here we should be able to see that we don't even have to take the next step with Aristotle because Simply from our first two premises, we have gotten no S, R, P, because we've shaded in that whole area that's shared by both S and P. So even though nothing exists, this is going to be Bool valid and Aristotle valid. Figure 4, I, A, I. Some P, R, M. All M, R, S. Therefore, some S, R, P. We will fill these in, and we will see that this is going to be valid for Boole. We don't have to worry about putting a circle and an X around it, because based on our first two premises, we're able to get Boolean validity, which gives us Aristotelian validity. It doesn't matter that X... It doesn't matter that M exists. It's going to be valid for both Boole and Aristotle. Figure 4, O, E, O. Some P are not M. No M are S. We do our universal first. Therefore, some S are not P. We have no spots for us to put the X with a circle around it for Aristotle. It doesn't matter that M exists. It's going to be invalid for Boole and for Aristotle. Figure 3, A, A, E, all M or P, all M or S, therefore no S, R, P. Should be pretty clear that this is not going to be valid for Boole, and because they were not trying to draw a particular conclusion, it's not going to be valid for Aristotle either. Even though it does seem like we could put that X with a circle around it in that central spot, that's not going to be even what our conclusion's talking about. It's in fact going to be the opposite of that. So even though M exists, it's going to be invalid for both Boole and Aristotle. Figure 1, O, I, O, we've actually taken a look at this before. Some M are not P, some S are M, therefore some S are not P. We know it's not going to be valid for Boole, and it's definitely not going to be valid for Aristotle because there's no shading going on. There's no universal premises, so there's nothing that we can assume the existence of. Even though S exists, 
is going to be invalid for Boole, and it's going to be invalid for Aristotle. And finally, figure 4, A, A, I, all P or M, all M or S, therefore some S, R, P. We will shade it in. We see that it's not going to be Boolean valid because we are drawing a particular conclusion from general or universal premises. However, it might be Aristotelian valid. We're going to put that X with a circle around it in the only spot available to us in the P term. We find out that P exists, which is fantastic, because that means even though it's Boolean invalid, it's going to be valid for Aristotle. Note that this is the only formulation of any categorical syllogisms where it actually matters whether or not P exists. That was the answers to Venn diagram problems for both Boole and Aristotle. Next up, if you didn't like Venn diagrams, we're going to be taking a look at another way to tell if categorical syllogisms are valid other than looking at a chart or using the Venn diagrams. We're going to be using a set of rules and learning about some fallacies related to them. Ooh, the return of fallacy February. Watch a new video every single day for 100 days here at Carnadies.org and stay skeptical, everybody.